All right, so that was about transformations. Um, we also wanna think about outliers and influence. And this is where I'm gonna bring in that NFL malevolence data, um, which I think uh, you saw, I had it accidentally in some code up above. Um, this is from that lock five data package, which I talked about at the very beginning that you might need to install. And uh, what we're trying to predict, well, let's, let's load it in first. We're gonna data, Oh, I think I even have the name of the data set wrong uh, in here. So it's Malevolent Uniforms NFL. So we're going to use the Malevolent Uniforms NFL data. So, okay, data, that thing. And now it should be in here. And I could click on it. So the variable is called NFL malevolence. And then we've got a Z score for the number of penalty yards that they got. And so the idea is maybe, so malevolence is a rating of how mean their uniforms look. The idea is maybe places that have meaner uniforms actually score more penalty yards. So uh, let's, um, let's build a model. We're gonna try and predict those Z penalty yards based on the malevolence rating um, so I'd like you to try and build your model and look at some residual plots. I would pause the video here um, and then come back. And now I'm going to do it. So I'm going to call this model M3. And that's going to be a linear model. We're trying to predict Z pen yards by NFL malevolence, comma, data equals malevolent uniforms I don't know why it's not suggesting it for me uniforms must be spelling something wrong ah there we go malevolent uniforms and FL well we'll try running this and see if it works okay it didn't find that data set so I've spelled it wrong again malevolent oh, uniforms and FL spelling is half the battle with with programming so I could look at my summary uh, and I've got, you know, some estimates. Um, and then if I wanted to, I could plot just M3 um, or I could put a which equal. I'm just going to do all of them together, I think. So I'll hit enter. All right. So maybe there's some nonlinearity because I've got that red line. Um, I don't know about the equality of variance. I think I could go either way here. Uh, the QQ plot, it's looking a little S-shaped. It's pulling away above the line and then below the line. So that looks kind of bad to me. And then my scale location, I've got some sort of big residuals. But then I want to look at this residuals versus leverage plot. And um, it looks like I've got at least one point, uh, row 28, that is really an outlier. So let's go look at what that row is. So that's Miami. Um, and I think uh, there's other ones that are like getting close. So maybe Houston is also close, but, but it's not quite there. So uh, row 28 is an outlier. It has high leverage and influence. So maybe we want to try to run this analysis again without that point to see if, uh, if it changes anything. So um, one way that we can um, remove some points from a data set is with this command slice. And um, with slice, you can either say which rows you want to keep or which rows you want to get rid of. So let's say that I wanted to get uh, keep just the first 10 rows of this data set. I could do this. I make a new name, I'm calling it first rows, and I'm gonna put into there the result of this code, where I'm gonna take malevolent uniforms NFL, and then I'm gonna slice uh, C one through 10. C stands for combine, um, and the colon is through. So one colon 10 will do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. The numbers one through 10 inclusive. So uh, let's look at our data sets in the environment. So malevolent uniforms, it has 28 observations. If I run this code, it doesn't do anything to malevolent uniforms. It still has 28 observations, but I have this new data set called first rows that just has the first 10. 
Um, if I didn't want those first 10, I wanted everything else, I could negate uh, what I was doing with a minus sign. So I want to slice not uh, the rows 1 through 10. So if I run this, I'm calling this one last rows, and last rows has 18 observations. So uh, the original data set still has all 28, but then I have these two smaller versions. So then we're going to try and use the slice command to make a data set without the outlier that we saw earlier. And I'd encourage you to try to figure out how to do that and then come back to the video. OK, so the row that I want to take out, oh, let's, let's see, uh, is Miami. And so I think I'm going to call this data set no Miami. And then I'm going to do an assignment operator. And that's going to be male malevolent uniforms NFL. We're doing the NFL. And then the percent greater than percent. And then I'll hit enter. And I'm going to slice minus 28. So if I just want to take one thing off, I think I can just do it um, without using the C. Let's see. So now no Miami, it has 27 observations instead of 28. And then I could make a new version of my model. So I'm going to call this M4. I think you can see why my uh, naming convention is maybe not the best. Um, I'm going to try and predict Z penalty yards by I'm going to hit the down arrow so that I can see my variables. Z pen yards by NFL malevolence comma data equals malevolent uniforms then FL. Hit tab. Um, so I could control enter here. Ooh. I'm just going to try it again. Control enter and now it works. I think I made this um, picture box too small. So then it's giving me that figure margins too large error, which just means your box is too small. Um, so let's make that box bigger. And then I'm going to hit enter and then put plot M4 in here. And then we could control enter. Hit enter to see the next plot. OK, I've still got some maybe nonlinearity going on here. Oh, I still have 0.28. Why is that? Mm, because I used the whole malevolent uniforms data set instead of using uh, no Miami. That's the data set that I really wanted. Let's fix it. No Miami. Control enter. Oops. And this was kind of stuck in the middle of that hit return to see next plot. Um, so I have to like hit enter a bunch of times and it's maybe confused. Then I can run my data again. So that's one of the reasons why I don't just plot them all, all together. I'll just say comma, you know, which equal one, because if you get stuck in the middle, it can confuse R. So let's control enter here. Let's do the plot here. I'm going to make this window bigger so that we can see them. Hit enter. Okay, we still maybe have some non-linearity there, but I don't see that point uh, 28 being called out. So I think we actually removed it. Hit enter again. Yeah, QQ plot, still not great. Uh, standardized residuals. Eh. Residual versus leverage. Okay, now it's showing me that row one is um, outside that region. So uh, maybe I want to go back and also remove that one. So let's see, uh, oops, malevolent uniforms. Um, number one is LA. So I'm going to call a new data set. Let's see, no Miami uh, underscore LA. And I'm going to slice, I'll slice C parentheses 28 comma 1. And that'll let me slice off the 28th row and the first row. So if I run this, now I have a data set with just 26 observations, and I could go down and change my data to no Miami underscore LA, control enter, control enter, hit return to see the next plot. I really want to see that one with Cook's distance. Ooh, now I don't have any that are out in uh, the big Cook's distance, so that's good. Um, and then I'm asking what's different. Um, and one of the things is that let's look at some model summaries here. So I think when I did model one, 
That was with the species area data. Yep. Uh, model two, that was transformed. Model three. Okay, so this was my original one that had the full data set. Here, my coefficients were negative 1.5 and 0.36, and I had not super significant, but kind of significant p-values on both those coefficients. But now I've made a new model that's removed some outliers. And if I summary M4, what I'm going to see is my estimates have changed a bunch. Um, they're really different numbers, and my p-values are no longer significant. So it was those two points that were really driving the significance in, um, in that model. So uh, that might make me think that, well, even though it looked like there was a trend before, uh, it actually probably isn't real. It was probably driven by those, those two points. All right, and then I just have one more um, coding thing that I want to tell you about. This is for the homework. Um, you might need to make different colors in a plot. And the homework data set, um, which I think is about like soil, um, has a categorical variable that's already in the data set. My example data sets today don't have a categorical variable, so I'm gonna make one. Um, so you don't need to understand this code. I'll just hit the play button. I'll explain it to you. Um, so I'm going to mutate, I'm going to make a new variable called outlier, um, and that's going to be if the team is in, oh, it actually shouldn't be Houston or Miami, it should be, um, it should be LA Raiders or Miami. So I'm going to fix that, LA Raiders. Um, if it's that, if it's one of those two teams, I'm going to make it, the variable say outlier, otherwise I'm going to make it say not outlier. So let's control enter and then go look at this data set again. So now I have a new uh, variable called outlier, which just says outlier or not outlier. Um, like I said, you don't need to make a new categorical variable. I was just making one up. And then um, we could color by that variable. So this is the same kind of ggplot. ggplot malevolent uniforms NFL plus g on point, x is NFL malevolence, y is equal to penalty yards, and then color is equal to outlier, that variable that was categorical. So if I control enter here, now I can see these two points. Those are the ones that were really making, uh, driving that line. Um, and I could also um, use the shape command to make them different shapes if I wanted to, or I could do both at once, color equal outlier, Control enter, and now they're both different shapes and different um, colors. Just because I am thinking about it, um, I'm going to change some things around. I'm going to copy this line, and I'm going to make a different version of this plot to show you something else. I'm going to take out part of this and put it into my ggplot. I need to change some parentheses. Um, I'm still going to keep AES here. So if I put the AES into my ggplot, it means that the X and Y are going to be used for my geom point. And then if I add anything else on here, which I want to do, I'm going to do a geom smooth method equal LM. And I'm going to say uh, SE equal false. Maybe I'll hit enter here so that I have nicer formatting. So if I do this, it's going to um, fit that regression line for me. Um, and uh, I think that these points are really influencing uh, the, um, the regression line. Because they're, you know, if we sort of think of all the red points as my cloud of data, this is, it's not super far outside the range, but it is outside the range. And the same thing here. And these are really far from their regression line. So they both have high leverage and high influence. Okay, so I think that's all the code you need to do the stuff in chapter one. Um, and I'd recommend you now go back and watch the last lecture video for this week, which is content to do with the beginning of chapter two.